89.1 AM, digital radio and the ABC Listen app. You're listening to Jason Chong on ABC Radio Adelaide. Jules is still away, so I'm filling in for the rest of the week on ABC Radio Adelaide Drive. I don't even really know where he's been, to be honest with you. He told me where he's going. He don't need roads. I don't know where that is. Have you seen some sun today? The sun's out at the moment. In fact, I, it's mainly, well, the small sliver of sky I can see from the window, it's mainly blue. Incredible. This, it's been flirting with us all day, but it may not be around for long. If you check the weather reports, it's a bit like when... When you see a friendly dog in a park. One day, I was doing some work from a park bench in a skate park near me, and a little staffy came up to me, and he jumped in my lap, and then he just sat there smiling while I wrote puns for Jules for Pundemonium. Its owner yelled at me <laughs> in a good way. He asked if I was okay with the current situation, and I said yes, and then he just continued skating. And that is why I always carry dog treats around in my pocket, and for no other reason that you can prove. Hey, coming up soon... On Jules's jury, I want to ask you if you think a restaurant has to offer options for people with dietary issues. You may have seen some protests outside a Perth restaurant that has banned vegans recently, and the very, well, the not very cruelty-free response from the vegan community. Uh, and Tuesday is Reverse Secret Sound Day. This one's a doozy. I've heard it, and if you know what it is, then you have the ears of a doberman. I've got no idea. But today, kids from eight Adelaide schools went to space, sort of. Uh, it was the SA Showcase Day for a program called Kids in Space. It's a national space education program uh, from the Andy Thomas Space Foundation, the Australian Space Agency and Makers Empire. Uh, and kids have been working for the last little bit on space-related problems, including some real-life real life issues that have been working uh being worked on by companies in lot 14 on north terrace and today they came together to share what they've all been up to mandy dimitriatis is the director of learning at makers empire and her team is behind the showcase events for kids in space uh mandy thanks so much for joining us thank you jason great to be here yeah are you knackered after today yeah i'm excited but yes a little tired <laughs> <laughs> all right so have the children saved us from our inevitable self-inflicted oh. demise our future is definitely in good hands. The students have come up with great ideas for us to solve problems on Earth using space technologies, but also uh, look at the future in space and the pro and preventing problems that uh, might might occur. Okay, so what kind of problems were the kids working on? So they were looking at things like space junk and protecting our our orbits from space junk. Uh, they were also looking at the experiences of scientists and astronauts working in space. So they found out that um, when you spend a period of time in space, you start to lose part of your bone density. You actually start to pee out your bones through oh. calcium. Yeah, you don't like um, pee out a femur, but you, <laughs> you do start to lose calcium from your bones. It's a good, good way to lose muscle. weight. Yeah, well, yeah, and muscle strength. So it's actually really, really important that astronauts get um, lots of exercise to keep their strength up and their, their muscle tone and bone mass. So one, one group, the group from Waruka Primary School that won our showcase, um, they're on the bus on the way home at the moment, but they came <laughs> up with some really cool ways for astronauts to exercise in space. And they came up with a, a, a dome that had all sorts of gym equipment that would work in a microgravity environment and be fun as well. So if we're increasingly going to send people to space, uh, to explore, to visit, to even live, then we're going to have to address some of these sorts of problems. Right. And so what what kind of technology? I, I'm guessing weights don't work. I, if I was going to go to the gym, I'd love to go do the weights room at, on the moon. Um, yeah, so there were a lot of magnets used and a lot of um, strapping things onto people's bodies. Great. Okay. Create the resistance. Yeah. Okay. So they in a, in a protected dome too. <laughs> mm. And so they were the winning school. What did they yes. win? Yes. So that, that so that was school was uh, won the showcase from our judges. We had three expert space judges um, that spoke to the students, and they won um, the trophy, but also the opportunity to come back in October to showcase their projects with the winning teams from all over Australia. We have um, winning teams from every state and territory coming to Adelaide in October. 
Great. And are they all working on the same problem or are they um, working on different problems? They, they've identified a specific problem, you know, in a broad area. So the, the question was, how can we save, how can we solve problems on Earth using space technologies, or how can we help scientists and astronauts do their work in space? Mm. So then they identified as something specific that was interesting or relevant to their local area. Excellent. Within that, but, but you didn't give them a jetpack or anything. No, not quite. Okay, well that's all right. <laughs> we did give them a three D printer. Oh well, there you go. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, and um, there was also a, a, a peer prize as well, wasn't there? Yeah, there was. So the, the students themselves, because today's showcase was all about the students and they were sharing their learning and um, we, they had to vote for the displays that they found the most interesting and that they thought the students had done the best job on. So that there was a, a team that won that prize and they got a giant 3D printed trophy to take back to school. Ooh, in fact, we have one of them on the line. You uh, do. We're also joined by Kai. He's from Swallowcliff School at Davron Park, part of the team that won the Kids in Space Peer Prize. Welcome, Kai. Hi, Mandy. Hey, Mandy, you're still on the line as well, aren't you? I'm Jason, by the way. Uh, oh. Kai, uh, what, what year are you in? Five. Five, excellent. And that you are the peer prize winners. Tell me about your project. What was it? Um, an ice machine. An ice that machine? Put, yeah. Um, the big cylinder, which is called the ice machine, um, the big driller, so the cylinder, yeah. um, it drills down to the ice, picks up the ice, sets the ice up to the heater, then it compacts the ice first, then melts it with heat very fast, um, and they, and the ice gets compacted to water, then the exhaust for the water to be compacted so people can drink from the earth. Okay, so it's a way of making water from ice that you drill yeah. down and find. Excellent. Yeah. Um, oh and so what was today like for you? Was it a good fun? Uh, Pretty fun and nervous. Mm -hmm. Got a little too excited, but <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. It does sound like it was an exciting time. Did you see any other ideas that you really liked as you walked around? Uh. Now. Nah. I like. Um. <laughs> I like how other people have discovered other stuff, like the little kids that were in. Wait, what? What was the kids in the red shirts? I forgot what they were. That, that was Waruka Primary School. Ah. Yeah. Waruka Waruka Primary. Yep. Yeah, what um, did they do? They, I, I looked what they did. They, um, I liked how they did two domes and little aliens with people. <laughs> oh, so the aliens are exercising as well. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. You've got to keep in shape. So now you go back to school. You've got a, a shiny new trophy. Uh, are you going to work on any other ideas? Uh, well, I'm just going to keep on is just building buses and trucks. Excellent. That sounds awesome. Uh, uh, oh, oh sorry. Hey, one thing. Yes. One thing, Jason. Um, I just noticed about the trophies. Yeah. They're 3D printed. Yeah. Mandy, did you 3D print these trophies? Yes, they were 3D printed in uh, in our office at Maker's Empire and it took 24 hours to 3D print that trophy for Kai and his so teammates to take back to school. <laughs> wow. Kai, I know for a fact that Mandy makes $1,000 an hour, so that's probably a $24,000 trophy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. I would sell that if I was you for sure. <laughs> All right, mate. Uh, thank you very much. Congratulations, Kai, to you and all of your schoolmates. Tell them I said hi. Yep. Excellent. Uh, and thank you very much, Mandy, the Director of uh, Learning at Maker's Empire. Do you have more of these kind of events coming up? You said there's one in October as well, right? Uh, yes, there is. So we're out and about uh, running the, the eight showcases with the team from Andy Thomas and the Space Foundation as well. In eight, we're, we've got two left. We haven't been to Victoria or Canberra yet. And then the winning team comes to the showcase, the national showcase at the Australian Space Discovery Centre in Adelaide in October. We do it all again. Great. Thank, <laughs> thank you so much. That's Mandy Dimitriadis, Director of Learning at Makers Empire.